So lots to discuss here. Let me bring in Sam Stein, Politico Deputy Managing Editor for Politics and MSNBC contributor. And then with us here in the studio, NBC's Von Hilliard and former Republican congressman from Florida, David Jolly. He's also an MSNBC political analyst. Von, we've been hearing for a while now from independents that if Trump were convicted, right. that may push them away. Are we seeing this come to fruition? What Donald Trump needed was to get a certain number of independents back to his corner. Folks who voted for him in 2016 fled him in 2020. And the number of conversations I had in the months leading up to that 2020 election where folks were saying, we were a little bit scared that he was going to be a wild card. And we voted for him anyways. And then he ended up turning out to be that wild card figure. And so the question was, in the years under the Biden administration, a lot of these independents are more conservative leaning, moderate voters that want to vote for an old school classic Republican, somebody that can, you know, push through policies that our friend here once <laughs> advocated for himself in Congress. And so this is where the question now is, is are those same folks, you know, that are like, maybe we should go back to that. Are they going to be reminded in what is only going to be an intense four months ahead here, the guilty conviction you see in that Fox News poll, that swing of independent voters. This is what the Biden camp wanted to see. And they were convinced that once folks re-engaged and actually saw Donald Trump for who he is, watched a trial play out over the course of seven weeks, that you would then see the numbers. This is just one poll. There's going to be a lot yeah. coming out in the weeks ahead. But this is an early indication of exactly what the Biden camp wanted, that once independents get re-engaged and see Donald Trump for who he is and himself and what a jury finds him to have been guilty of, they will start to move. And that's what this shows. Well, and, and, you know, he was complaining for a long time about being kept in the courtroom and not being able to be out on the campaign trail. Yeah. But now he's been able to get out there since his conviction. People are seeing and hearing more of him. This 11 point swing is significant. I should note Trump just posted on social media that this poll is trash. But <laughs> if you're in the Trump campaign right now, Congressman, do you have to be worried? You do, because this is this is the essence of Joe Biden's entire theory of the campaign going back a year, that this is how it would play out, that as it got closer to the election, as Donald Trump faced criminal culpability and accountability, and as Joe Biden's work in the White House began to really take effect, that it would be a slow march to November where he would overtake Donald Trump. And if there's any, any indication here that should give Biden hope and worry Donald Trump, it's that. This is Biden's strategy all along. And I think what we're seeing is... People are feeling better about the economy. We see those numbers. But they also have been reminded of late why they don't like Donald Trump. Outside of MAGA, people don't like Donald Trump. And so they're thinking, OK, I could be OK with Joe Biden, but I really don't want Donald Trump back. Let's talk about the economy for a moment, because, Sam, when you look at this polling, 32 percent now say it is in good or excellent shape. It's not super high, but it is the highest of... Biden's presidency. In addition, just 30 percent said they thought the economy was getting better back in May. In June, the question was a little different, asking whether voters were optimistic about the economy. And 44 percent said yes. What specifically is behind this shift, do you think? Well, I think there's probably two things. One is the actual economy improving. Uh, you're seeing inflation Steady at low end, obviously still too high for a lot of people, and especially in the housing market, um, but lower than it had been. And people are starting to feel better about their personal finances because of that. And I think the other thing is sort of atmospheric, which is as you get closer and closer to the election, further in the election season, uh, people tend to rally back to their party. So uh, Democrats had for you know a number of months been skittish more openly skeptical about Joe Biden, more willing than uh, than usual to express their um, disappointments with the presidency. But as the election nears, you get a bit of a rallying behind the flag type uh, phenomenon that happens where Democrats start to see, th see things more rosy uh, and they start to rally behind their president. And so I think that's what's being picked up in the polls. And frankly, that's problematic for Trump a little bit because he's been clinging to this small lead uh, but that was premised on the idea that traditional Democratic constituencies would either stay home or even vote for him. If they do come back into the fold, that lead will evaporate and you could end up seeing Joe Biden inch ahead a little bit. Congressman, we have seen the Biden campaign really lean into character 
recently. They just sure. launched this big ad campaign focusing more and more on Trump's legal issues. And sure. yet in this poll, by a margin of 30 points, 59 percent to 29 percent, voters say the election is more about the issues than the character of these two candidates. Is the Biden administration or ca campaign, I should say, focusing on the wrong thing? I think they have to do two things at one time. Joe Biden, as president of the United States, has to remind the American people that there's a criminal on the ballot. You can't overlook that, and you need to remind the American people of that. And what does that mean? <clears throat> it means that the stakes of this race are that much more critical for protecting individual rights, for protecting democracy itself, and then for electing a president that is in the traditional mold of working for all Americans versus Donald Trump, who wakes up fighting for his own freedom every day. That is the White House message. I think you have to touch on the criminality while also reminding people that the stakes, the stakes reflected in Donald Trump's criminality are the future of our democracy. I think Biden's doing a good job at that. His campaign says he's going to be really focusing in on this contrast at the debate, which, again, is just one week away now. Vaughn, what do we know about the preparation for both of these men heading into that debate? We're told that the approaches are two uh, very different ones. For Joe Biden, it's more of a classical approach, that they're going to be including some mock debates where somebody will be stepping in. He's going to Camp David Trump tonight to start really focusing on the debate with prep, With a number right? of key advisors to work through this. Yeah. We're talking about a 90-minute debate that is going to cover a plethora of issues. And Donald Trump is obviously somebody that uses insults or goes on tangents, and that is a known entity that is sometimes it's hard to combat. And for Donald Trump, you know, his campaign team is, is sending a very different message, that they have no plans to have uh, a mock debate. <laughs> Chris Christie stood in for Joe Biden for Donald Trump back when they were still allies back in 2020. And this go around, instead, they say that they're having policy discussions with allies like Kellyanne Conway and J.D. Vance. But this is for Donald Trump. He's going to a fundraiser tonight in Cleveland. Cleveland, Ohio, with Vance. Uh, and so they say that he wants to stay out on the campaign trail. He's going to Philly on Saturday. And that is his form of debate prep that he's always prepping every day as he's engaging with the media and engaging with voters. Yeah, one of his campaign advisors, a senior advisor, saying that, you know, Trump talks with voters in town halls. He speaks to thousands at rallies. He's frequently taking questions from the press and that that's, I guess, good enough in their <laughs> mind. Uh, I, I hear you there, Sam. I, I'm curious to get your take on on expectations for this debate, given Politico was just reporting the other day how Trump is involved in these policy discussions heading into the debate, talking to advisors and lawmakers about the different issues. Do you think there's a chance the debate could look like a more traditional debate focused on policy and plans? No, not really, honestly. Uh, not, you, you, you studied Trump's history. I, I would be very surprised if this became a very wonky debate. Uh, I suspect that we're going to have accusations of corruption, possibly mention of Hunter Biden, accusations that the justice system has been you know, turned against Trump uh, by Biden himself. Uh, it's going to focus on stamina and age and whether Biden is capable of fulfilling the job for four more years and so on and so forth. Uh, but look, I mean, this is a very unnatural and unique election uh, to elderly men, uh, both coming into the debate with kind of a, a different expectations, but, uh, high, you know, somewhat low expectations for each of them. In Biden's case, Trump has set the bar extremely low. And if Biden remains upright the entire 90 minutes, I think he will have cleared Trump's bar. And then conversely, for Trump, uh, people just assume that he's he's going to be rabid and, and out of control and go after Biden in the most vicious and personal ways. And if he can maybe resist doing that, then perhaps he's cleared the bar set for him. But I don't expect this is going to be a policy, deep, a deep policy a drenched debate by any stretch. Hopefully everybody tunes in to, to get a chance to see both these men yeah. and hear what they have to say. Uh, Sam Stein, thank you, and congrats on your sure. new role. Wanted to oh, thank you. I appreciate that. Add that. Von Hilliard and former Congressman David Jolly, as always, thank you. Good to see you both.